Pesach, however, reveals to humanity and to Israel not only its guardian shepherd, but also the judge. I think that's where we got to. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel when he smote the Egyptians, and our, and our houses he delivered. The judge, the judge does not allow welfare, uh, and does not allow welfare and woe, life and death, salvation and destruction, to be distributed blindly among the homes of men. He pauses over each one. He weighs, considers, examines, and judges each one before he brings it in or keeps out death and destruction, <laughs> before he grants or refuses sustenance and deliverance. On behalf of the oppressed, the maltreated, maltreated slaves who are deprived of their human rights, their human dignity, he sends a warning to the throne of the mighty. This slave, this horde of slaves, who from your lofty throne you regard as lower than the lowest of your own subjects, to whom you deny every title to civic rights, to property, to family, to a home of their own, to free exercise of their abilities, to human dignity, to human existence, whose marriages you break up, whose children you drown, whose flesh you lacerate, whose spirits you darken, and whose bodies you crush under the yoke of your forced labor. This slave who crouches under the lash of your taskmasters, under the heavy load of your bricks, he is my child. He is the firstborn to my human family. He is sent to proclaim the glory of my majesty. Set my people free, and they may devote their powers to my service. If you refuse to set them free, you will find me in front of you. I will slay your child, your firstborn. That's just. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that the words that God speaks to Paro in Rev. Hirsch's voice he speaks to us too. And perhaps this is the answer, it's one of the answers that uh, the UK Chief Rabbi Lloyd Sachs gives. Have you ever lost anything valuable? Oh yeah. You get panicky, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Good watch, a telephone, right? Your car in the parking lot. <laughs> you know? In my case, my child. I once lost my child for about five minutes in a shul. I went to get a book. When I came back, he was gone. Absolutely panicking. When I found him, the increase in my passion and love for him was very dramatic. Our duty in this world is to seize life. To see his life as God has given it, to understand it, you know, choose life. Eitz Chaim, tree of life. The Torah is an Eitz Chaim, tree of life. But not just for ourselves, for a world, for a way of living. And Pesach calls out, as Rav Hirsch does. In the name of God, the dignity of man, and insists that we be a light of that dignity for ourselves, for our families, and as a universal example. There's a lot of discussion about how we ended up in Egypt. And uh, just a little vort that can help everybody a little bit. One of the toughest questions, I think, for everybody is, what is the carpus about at the table? Mm -hmm. You know, we sit down at the table, we make a blessing over wine, we understand that. Then we wash without a blessing, or chatz, and we eat carpus, a vegetable, something, potato, parsley. Banana, pineapple, <laughs> number of things, right? And when the mission says, why do we eat carpus and why do we wash? The general answer is, <clears throat> so the children will ask. 
<laughs> no, I don't know about you, but it's not a good enough. That's very unsatisfactory. Yeah. The reason we eat carpus is so that a child will say, "Why do you eat carpus?" And my response will be, "So that you ask. Why would I ask? Why you eat carpus?" <laughs> Circular conversation. Yeah, pretty lame. <laughs> so there's more to it than that, right? Because in the four questions, in the four questions, right? We ask a question. On all the nights of the year, we don't dip. On this night, we dip once, we dip twice. Right? Very unusual. Right? What's the dipping about? The first dipping we do is the carpus. The second dipping we do is the moror and the charoset. Right? So, the carpus is something that has a little starch and a little sweetness into it. Like I said, it can be a banana or pineapple for that matter. It has to grow from the ground. It can't be, it can't be a fruit, per se. Um, we dip it in something bitter, salty. Right? So we change it from something sweet to something salty. At the end of the meal, right, or just before the meal, at the end of the magi, right, we take something very bitter and we dip it in something sweet. How did we precipitate ourselves, finding ourselves in Mitzrayim? Who was the first to go to Mitzrayim? Joseph, was it? Yeah, Joseph. 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 The brother sold them to Potiphar, right? Yeah, the Potiphar, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And how did they explain it to their father? What did they do? The animal kills him. They dip the sweater into a... a they take this famous coat, you know, yeah. the coat of many colors. The one, the one that's right. very gay. Right? And they, they dip it in goat's blood, and they go to the Tati, mm -hmm. Yaakov, and they say, Do you recognize this? Mm -hmm. oh, my Yosef has been torn to pieces by a wild animal. How did it come about? They took something beautiful and they dipped it into blood. Dipped. 400 years of slavery, 210 years of slavery, 80 years of slavery, whatever. Comes the first Pesach, right? It's time to go. But we celebrate the first Pesach before the Pesach. We're still slaves in Egypt. We're not in the Midbar. You would think, you know, like Hanukkah celebrates the first. One year later. Right? Purim celebrates after the victory, right? We have the Suda, right? Although it's interesting because they have a celebration before the victory too. <laughs> for, right? Pesach, we sit down and have the, the Paschal sacrifice and the meal and the whole Seder in Mitzrayim. And it's only the next day that we leave. Right? Who survives that night, that horrible night when throughout Egypt? There wasn't one house that didn't hear the screams of death. Who survives it? The Jews. And those who went with Jews. How does, how does, uh, how, how do they distinguish themselves? He has to put their blood on the ground, the, 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 the door sill. They dipped the hyssop mm. in blood. Right? And they paint the lintels. By the way, there's a little confusion around this. They painted the inside of the door, not the outside. Yeah, because otherwise then the, the Arab, the... Egyptians would see it, and they would know who to go in the house. But it was more than that. Mm -hmm. It was God's way of saying, you distinguish yourself. Yeah. Right? You reckon, it's not for me. I know who's Egyptian yeah, yeah, and not Egyptian. But I, I didn't you know, want it, that remember, it wasn't an angel it. doing yeah, this. It was yeah. God himself doing yeah, it. Right? I knew already. He yeah. said, I want you to, to make a decision. I want yeah. you to make a commitment. Mm -hmm. You will kill the, 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 the idol of Egypt, the lamb. Right? which you yourself have taken as a sacrifice at different times. Remember, the Jews were idol worshippers too. Mm -hmm. When they crossed the Yamsuth, the angels complained. Mm -hmm. They said, they're in Avodazar and they're in Avodazar. Mm -hmm. To God. Why, why you kill them and you save them? It's not fair. Yeah. Right? The Jews had some merits, but that wasn't one of them. Right? So God said, destroy, take for four days the sheep, and then kill it farm animals that the Egyptians worship and that you're getting into. Right? 
take that blood and put it on your doorpost so you see who you are. And so the second dipping is the dipping of the Exodus, the dipping of the night of the death of the firstborn. Right? That's why we dip. It's a better explanation than so you will ask. Mm. <laughs> I think. Yeah, definitely. But it's also pointed out. The Jewish people become a sacrifice. It's a, it's all it's also pointed out by Rabbi Sachs that <clears throat> what we need to understand is that freedom, as in the sweetness of the carpus, right? can be destroyed lest we think that it is for one individual. The freedom is, to quote the Constitution of the United States, an inalienable right given by God. Right? It's a very important thing is that we as Jews won our freedom as a gift from God. And we suffered terribly so that we would forever recognize what a lack of that freedom is and struggle to banish that lack of freedom from the whole world. From the whole world. Right? This is what it means to be light unto the nations. Right? To carry this message of the dignity of man. And I, I just want to, before we end with this thought, I want to make sure that I'm very clear on this. I do not define freedom as the ability to do what you want. That's anarchy. All right. It's liberty. And so I want to come back to a thought that Rabbi Breiter has passed on and that Rabbi Sachs mentions and Rabbi Hirsch mentions is that the celebration of the, this night of Passover revolves around an interesting word, right? The word is Seder, right? We sit down for a Seder, right? A Seder, for want of a better term, means order, schedule, right? Very specific. Order and schedule. You know, in yeshiva, they have a morning seder, an afternoon seder, evening seder. No matzah involved at all, right? It's what my schedule of learning is in the morning, what my schedule of learning is in the afternoon, what my schedule of learning is in the evening. That's what it is. You know, you know on this week we didn't have evening seder for this time for some reason, right? On this week we did this in morning seder. Right? Order. Order is the sign of a free person. We know Rashi says that the Chumash should have begun with the blessing of a new month, the recognition of the control of time. And he explains why it begins with Rashi's, but he said in point of fact it should have begun there. Because it's the first commandment given to the Jewish people as a nation as they're leaving, as the Rosh Chodesh. Right? So it's control of time. A free man controls his time. It doesn't mean he doesn't work much. Hmm. It doesn't mean he doesn't work much, right? Very often, free people can work much harder than slaves, particularly when you look at the definition of a Jewish slave here. <laughs> but a free man, and in many ways, you know, as we evaluate our own lives, we can see that how much freedom we have may revolve around about how much control we have of our own time. You know? I'm going to uh, disagree with you. The Romans talked about carpe diem, seize the day. I much more prefer what you said before about seizing life through following halachas. It's a difference because instead of seizing a place, we seize an activity and our life, and we're free, and we're one. Um, I, last week, I was, a rabbi came from... Uh, I would Kabbalah. argue that we are not a people of place. We are a people of time. It's, it, I, I wouldn't seize time. I would seize life. I, I liked what you said before. Um, you know, there's a division in time which is unique to us, which we have accepted upon ourselves. It's called Shabbos. Hmm. It's 24 hours. But we seize right. that What time makes it special? Through activities. I didn't you say... Any activities no, you, you missed something. If you think what I meant was that, that it's your time off, I didn't mean that at all. I didn't mean that at all. What I meant was, and this is my point, is that 
a Seder, right, is a festival of freedom. And yet, we follow a very specific order. It is called the order, right, the schedule of it, right? So the point that I was trying to make was that order in itself is part of being a free man. Order right? of activities. Order. Order of your time, right? It's what you're doing with your you, time. You can't, you could, even ordering time on a watch that moves is moving a hand or two hands, hour and, and seconds. You, you can never seize time without seizing an activity, okay. a movement. Okay, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think we're actually talking about the same thing, okay. I have to tell you. Uh, <clears throat> because there is a time when you start the Seder, <laughs> right? You know, you can't start the Seder before a certain time. There's a time when you must finish the Seder, right? You can't continue the Seder. You continue talking after, but you have to have the Afkomen by Hatzos, right? You can't start the second Seder until after the first day is ended. It's why the second Seder starts so much later than the first Seder does, you know? So, <clears throat> but let me just finish the thought, okay. right? And the thought is this, that if you accept that having control of time in your life uh, is the sign of a free man. Mm. You have to be wary to think that order by itself is freedom. Because order by itself can be terribly constricting. The Romans and the fascists. Right. Like yeah, that. that's right. You know, they made the trains run on time. Right? Mm. So by itself is not enough. Right? And so it is expansive. This idea expands in many ways. Right? You know, we talk about Lately, there have been many authoritarian regimes overthrown, and there are the voice of the public, and there is a elected process. And we say, how wonderful it is democracy has risen in this area. <laughs> the power of the people to tyrannize over a minority is one of the signs of democracy not the sign of freedom. You have to incorporate into one man, one vote the idea that the majority can never deny rights to the minority and in fact is required to protect minority rights. This is crucial to it. So simply giving people the vote you know, creates the world we're seeing around us, a mockery of, of democratic values. Time when you have control of it, you sit at a Seder. You know, Rabbi Rodgers likes to tell this joke. Uh, he told the story about a person who came to him, and they were sitting around the Seder table, he said, and the Zaydi, the, the Alta Zaydi, the grandfather, was running the Seder. And one of the little boys in the middle of the Seder had a question. He said, Zaydi, Zaydi. You know. No questions. Tonight is the Passover Seder. <laughs> and he continued, right? He had good control of time, you know, he's going to get to the end of it, yeah, right? right? But there's no question. But that is a lack of freedom. That's mm -hmm. becoming enslaved mm -hmm. to your Seder, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're always looking for, you know, in between the, you know, the people who talk about this technically talk about the pace of the Seder, you know, that you want to pace it, right? Um, you have to have a consciousness of who you're talking to, that they understand, they get the lesson. That's why we talk about the poor son so much, is that each person learns it separately and differently. Uh, but at the end, we're passing on an idea of from slavery to freedom, and that we have a responsibility, I think a unique responsibility, right, to never let go of that. Thomas Jefferson said that... Uh, the blood of freedom is watered periodically. Sorry, the uh, freedom itself, the tree of liberty, that's what it is. The tree of liberty is watered from time to time by the blood of tyrants and patriots. That we have sacrificed to be able to say the words of Shema. We have sacrificed for generations to recognize that every individual is a piece of God right? and should be treated accordingly. 
And Pesach calls out to us to renew that determination, to win it for ourselves and for others. There was a time where we could focus on others much more than we can today. You know, when I was growing up, the Jewish commitment was to the rights of people who had deprived rights. Tragically, the enemies of that kind of thought have turned themselves once again on the Jew and attack us, attack us in our nationality, attack us in our religion, attack us in our ethos. And um, we have to gather our strength. And remember, we are here eternally for a reason, uh, to help God fulfill the plan that he has. And Pesach should lift our spirits. It should remind us, as it has reminded thousands and millions of people, Jewish and non-Jewish alike, that there is always the possibility of redemption. Even when Moshe Rabbeinu himself said, it's finished, God <coughs> said, now is the time. So Pesach is a day, a unique day in the middle of the year that cries out and says, renew it, renew it. You know, know that it can happen. Whatever it is that needs to happen to make this world better, this is a day that says nothing can stand in the way once we make this determination that this is God's plan itself as described in the Seder. I wish everybody a kosher, a freilicha, sameach, ak sameach. You have a great Seder, great two Seders here in Goas. Next year, I expect to be giving this class in Yerushalayim with all of you, with the Third Temple rebuilt. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.